You peek through the bullet holes, yep, that pie is shot to hell. Do, 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 do. Hello everybody and welcome to another adventure into the wicked wicked wild wild west of Loathing. Uh, I am here with Mr. John Turbo Finlay. Yes, it's me, it's me, it's John Finlay. <laughs> and he's once again on the L to the M to the C. So, um, first of all, you do the thing of getting all of these, all these photo things on the screen. How dare you be on the screen. Um, there you go. So, what I can do to you? It's all the. No one will know my face now. So, ah, oh, we have a new enemy type for the Evil Vin 2. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's not a bad one. All right, hello everybody. Uh, so, previously on West of Loathing, uh, lots of stuff happened. Um, we dealt with ghosts, we dug up corpses, there was uh, cow horrendous things going on. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, we've got a sort of a ragtag bunch now. Uh, and we have our armoured horse Cumberbatch. Uh, was, this, was there a thing we were going to do in the... I can't remember if we were going down into this area down here. I, the mausoleum. I think you already went... I think you already went into the mausoleum. Yeah. Like I think we were just finishing up this area. Yeah. Okay, because we've got to we've got we've got to, we've quote unquote got to do a ritual. Now, um, let's like let's fight a skeleton because we can open a drawer <laughs> and, and do that. And just re-familiarize ourselves with the combat. Melee attack. <laughs> Bull stomp. It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, your turn. Let's get beefy. Plus two muscle. We'll strike this damage. This uh, we have to, we have to put Skype busy because work wants to talk. Uh, and then Susie will shoot it, and it will go down because sorry, skeleton. Uh, gained 10 XP though, and gained a skeleton bone. Hooray! Let's uh, let's fight another one if they're just giving me lots of XP for it. Beefy okay, again. We're, we're going into grinding mode, folks. <laughs> no, I'm just getting just. This is a place where you can grind, clearly. <laughs> but if it's gonna give me another 10 XP. Hey, you got skull chips. Some itty bitty bits of skull. Once they were good for keeping someone's brain salsa inside, but not anymore. Hooray! Anyway, it's, it's, it's the Dave Yard, because it's the. Uh, everyone's called Dave. Dave. They're all dead, Dave. Dave. Everybody's dead, Dave. Everybody's dead, Dave. Dave, everybody's dead. Everybody is dead, Dave. Right. It's your partner. Might spooky. Nervous. Hell, after what I seen, human skeletons are a walk in the dang park. Don't know why she's sort of semi-Australian there, but never mind. Um... <laughs> Heh, what do you think we should do next? Am I forgetting about anything? So you should get saltpeter from Fort Cowardice. Uh, Pottenkin Gang, he's dealing with. And we need to just search around uh, town as well. Uh, but we can also wander. So we're going to do that. We're going to have a wander. And see if we can find anything new. In fact, we have. Your key eyes detect a secluded cave in the near distance. Exploring it would definitely be a good use of your time. You discovered a new map location, the Shaggy Dog Cave. Oh, uh, Kev, your ticker's ring, uh, incorrect. That is very true, it is not Half-Life 2. It's not, well, perhaps it Only is. Only just knows it. 
It's, it's, but perhaps it is. You know, you, you, very you, unique you, version we'll of it. We'll never know. <laughs> Gordon Freeman, Wild West. I just, in fairness, I do have a crowbar currently. <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be. It's 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 hypothetically. Just, it's, it could be hypothetically that. Vex, 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 attack. Although I swear, if we do actually come across head crabs in west west of Lovin, then Probably that would be just too ironic. <laughs> no, they won't be called head crabs. They'd be called knee crabs or something like that. <laughs> knee crabs. <laughs> Shin crabs. Um, let's go. Hey, let's go there now. Yes. Let's go all the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. Just be far away. Okay. Okay, okay Cumberbatch, settle down. Let's put, there's another beer barrel cactus, but we don't Skate have foraging. Spot. Anything hidden around here? No. No. No busy like sneak behind the scenery. Apparently not. Dig it all cave inside. Some fellow was really into plaques. Think they're important? Only one way to find out. There's a plaque bolt. Break them. There's a plaque bolt of the cave wall here. Read it or walk away. Let's read it. A record of the events of the expedition to and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887, as recorded by Jim Plackwright. Okay. Having acquired through various and sundry means, a story which is interesting in its own right, but better saved for another time, a map purporting to leave to a large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals hidden by the infamous highwayman and train robber Black Cole Jr. in the years before the cows came home. I, Jim Plackwright, along with three companions, these being Nathaniel Wyman, Cyrus Howard and Douglas Watts, set out to find sh to find Shaggy Dog Cave and the aforementioned treasure. <laughs> Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade and a mining pick, a large coil of rope, one large basket of eggs, as well as an assortment of other trail provisions and cookware, my own collection of pla <laughs> black plaques and engraving tools, one large and shaggy dog, and a butler. Oh, what? Oh dear. What's what? Like uh, a a but a but for. Yeah, it's a but for. Well known. First, I've heard of it. Do you not know what a but's for? A but for's a but's for sitting down. <laughs> After travelling the two and a half days to the south and east, we arrived at a small town named Dirtwater. Aha! The largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the dog to watch the horses, the four of us entered the local saloon and each ordered a beer, except Sai, who was satisfied with water. Ah, uh, my kind of guy. Yes, yeah, so we might find some more stuff in back in Dirtwater here, you know. Um... The barman provided our drinks as requested and then withdrew a small wooden box from underneath the bar asking us if we'd care to witness something real interesting. Considering that we had still quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked him if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he had never been there personally but gave us rough directions which correlated nicely with the notes on our map. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had tampered with our wagon. Fortunately, the only supplies missing were the butt for, and the entire basket of eggs, apart from the one that Doug had concealed within a pocket for safekeeping. We also discovered that the dog had absconded via the horses. Why? <laughs> Forcing Nate and Sai, after a drawing of lots, to share. After acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as a replacement butt for, we headed out into the open desert. The sun shone down mercilessly. It wasn't very nice to us. 
<laughs> Though we took some small solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made this expedition during the summer months rather than November. In order to pass the time on the trip and resist becoming dazed from the heat and susceptible to desert mirages, we exchange stories of our youth, which I will not be retelling here for reasons of length. Yeah, try, try to cut down that... Uh, however! <laughs> However, I will relate to you three odd occurrences that happened to us during our trek through the oh, desert. Goody. The first one, the first one was two or three hours out of dirt water when Nate, Nate, right, he noticed a glint of sunlight upon a metallic <laughs> object partly buried in the sand. I know, right? This was revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture, which fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it in with the wagons and our other tools. Our next encounter was with a nomadic goblin tribesman who we discovered spoke excellent English. It inquired us to our destination and we replied that we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave, though we did not disclose the reason for our journey. The goblin confirmed that we were heading on the correct course and mentioned that he had only a short time earlier witnessed a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in the same direction. We all agreed this was an unusual sight indeed and continued on our way. Oh, oh just unusual. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sometime later, we encountered a large <laughs> adobe hut, accompanied by two identical seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter from the heat, which we gratefully accepted, and introduced themselves as hermits. This struck me as partic as as partic as uh, yeah. This struck me as peculiar, given that there were two of them and they were hermits. But I felt it would be rude to question them on that point. <laughs> One of the hermits confirmed that we were near Shaggy Dog Cave, and the other hermit confirmed that confirmed that what his brother said was true. They also commented that they had seen a larger Shaggy Dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agreed this was an unusual sight indeed. The hermits refreshed our water supply in exchange for our butt fall, and we continued on our way, excited to be finally nearing our goal. After two more hours, we finally arrived at Shaggy Dog Cave, carefully keeping our excitement in check lest we become incautious. We unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon and took a brief respite on the cool shade near the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Doug unpocketed and shared the egg he'd been saved from our basket that had been stolen in dirt water. Once we were rested, we decided the time had come to explore the cave. <sighs> God. That Discovering got, that, that we had... Discovering that we had neglected to pack torches, lanterns, or any other light source with which to illuminate the cave, we declared that it was indeed fortuitous that Nate had discovered the antique oil lamp during our travels. He gave the brass a quick shine and then lit the wick, and we were relieved to discover that it lit easily and provided a very adequate amount of light. As we headed into the cave, we were further encouraged by the fact that the floor was quite even and easy to traverse, and there were no side passages which which might cause us to become lost. Despite this, I resolved to hang a number of plaques to mark our progress through the cave and engrave them with the tail of our journey, such that others who discovered the cave after us might be entertained and edified by our story. <laughs> yeah, I because you were that, like, <laughs> Like, the plaques aren't, aren't even, like, a foot apart. Soon, right, soon, we came to the end of the tunnel, while Nate, Si, and Doug all took turns with the excavation. I completed the last of the aforementioned plaques. It was a matter of perhaps an hour before Si's shovel struck a wooden surface with a hollow noise, and we hauled a traditionally styled treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. Must be there, there. The chest was locked with an ancient and rusty, rusting iron padlock, which broke easily with a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened the lid slowly, and the flickering light of the antique oil lamp shone brilliantly upon jewels of every colour and shining ingots of precious metals, just as promised by legends of Black Cold Junior. Joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest into our wagon and began the journey home. Thanks for reading! <laughs> and, may your endeavors, and may your endeavours be equally successful! Signed, Jim Blackright. You. Toss pot. <laughs> it's a hole, a completely empty one. <laughs> so this entire thing, this entire yeah. game is utterly pointless. It, yeah, Shaggy Dog story. Uh, 
Uh, boy. <laughs> oh, asymmetric. This game. This, this game, game, guys. It's worth it's worth noting that there's a bear barrel cactus there whenever we get the appropriate thing, but we can have a wander in a different direction. Ooh! You spot an old mine on the horizon. Abandoned mines are safe and fun to explore. It's got a new map location, Snake Pit Mine. Found something else. Right. Right. Uh, let us go to. Uh, oh, desolate, lonesome coast we have there. Let's go to. Uh, I thought cowardice was something we needed, didn't we? You uh, discover what is so. either an open grave or a very deep and rectangular pothole. Jump in and see what you find. So. Well, if it's a pothole, it must have been here a very long time because you found the remains of an antique traffic attend accident, rather. You got an item, a skeleton bone. You got an item, skull chips. You got an item, an old wedding ring. The honeymoon is definitely over this old tarnished silver thing. Okay, so that Fort Cowardice. Uh, at least it gets you some meat later. Yep. Just like the old saying goes, when life give you cannons, make a cannonade. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do oh, does it now, Kev? There is such a thing as a cannonade. So. Cannonade. Cannonade is a group of cannons. Um, uh, she abandoned the riots. Uh, well, I'll keep an eye out while you check buildings and all. Might be something useful we can find. Sure. Can I go up the ladder? You climb up into the watchtower and take a look around. Nice view from up here. Use your binoculars because we can use the binoculars that we have. You see a horse. You see a horse apple big enough to well, big enough to see from here. You discover a new location, the big apple. You climb down from the watchtower and pitch the binoculars into a nearby trash can. But, hey, wait, have I, we lost the binoculars now. Better not have done. Did we even have them in the first yeah, time? We had binoculars, but I don't mean that one time use binoculars. That's, that's crap. I don't recall having a pair of binoculars. Oh, yeah, no, we got it for a previous task or whatever, but yeah. Huh. Okay, been so, so we, I think we've lost while, our so. binoculars just because we've used them once. Okay. That's a bit sucky. Maybe you might we've find just another got a, a pair. Whole so. bunch of, there's a whole bunch of records here, basically. Now you're just looking at the same ones you've read before. What is wrong with you? I can't get enough. <laughs> All these numbers! They're so beautiful! Major Ezra Wolf II, 65th Beanslinger Division. Killed in action. Yeah, no, nothing from that. This was once a reception desk, but now the most appropriate thing for it to receive would be a free trip to the dump. <coughs> the cupboard is bare, and also it's not really a cupboard. And what is it? <laughs> uh, the table's got something though. It looks like there's still some good mess left. We've got uh, military-grade whiskey and a hard tack. Uh, this cracker is definitely optimised for the shelf life instead of taste. Military-grade whiskey. This is a special kind of government whiskey designed for soldiers in the field. It's fortified with all sorts of vitamins and things and can be used in a pinch to sterilise or at least make the victim feel better about <laughs> a battle wound. Increases your muscle mysticality and moxie by one for the rest of the day. There's a whole heap of not very nice stuff on the table. And the stove is beyond cleaning. It's not uh, our job to clean it, okay. so... Uh, oh, so, in general, this is a door. More specifically, it's a door to the General's office. Even more specifically, it's the locked door to the General's office. Pick the lock. Oh, Holy shit, the general thing. is there! 
He's shooting his gun at, at something. I was gonna say, I, well, as long as it's not shooting at you, you're fine. There's a goblin. The goblin sees that this desk is repeatedly firing his pistol at that pie safe. Get their attention. Get their attention with violence or leave them <laughs> to their business. What would you like to do? Uh, get their attention. Just get their attention. With violence. Oh no, I said get their, I've got their attention. <laughs> Say, uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Shooting pies! Always, always shooting pies. Could you elaborate that or just attack them? <laughs> or leave them alone? No, let's elaborate on that. Could you elaborate on that? Why? Shooting a pie? Yes. The destroying, obviously. Must be destroying a terrible pie. What is wrong with a pie? Bah! Yeah, what is wrong with a pie? Bah! Humans will never understanding. I mean, great. I mean, granted, I can't have pies anymore, personally, myself, but still. No, no really, why a pie shooting? Shut up! So much angry! <laughs> we can keep asking the angry I, Jen. No, I, I as angry me, do not make me. Yeah. Shut up! So much angry! Just keep, just keep poking him. <laughs> Yeah. Why? Why? Looking, I'm pretty sure being a pie is destroyed. Destroy? Uh, huh? Look, so many holes in a pie safe. You winning, a pie is dead. <laughs> you certain being? <laughs> Waiting here, I will check in. <laughs> you peek through the bullet holes. Yep, that pie is shot to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! You are a success! A pie is so very destroyed being. Our I, winner I, is you! I doing it! So much doing it! Ah, but now what? Huh? What are I shooting now? Um... Oh dear, this might not go so well. Yeah... I, I, I guess... I guess you finding another pie? What? There are more pies being? Yes, a world is full of pies. Oh no! <laughs> this violence will never ending! Sorry. Sorry being, not wishing to enabling this behaviour. <laughs> God. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, this is some philosophical kind of like, uh, script work right here. It's like, yes, our world is full of pies. No! This is my cross bearing. I must going and continuing the fight. Okay. I go now. People need. Thanking you. Okay. I wish you good luck against the force of the forces of Pi. We can intimidate them, or we can salute them. Yes. Hmm. Intimidate them indicates we might get something, but we can still or we can salute them and show respect or something, I don't know. Congratulations, Pie Goblin. Your choice. Man. What's my choice? Hmm. Intimidate them or salute them. Turbo, uh, so I, before before I was so rudely disconnected because of my stupid fucking internet connection again. <laughs> um, well, well, uh, not the internet connection, the little dongle thing that I have connected to my PC. Um, I said salute them before I got disconnected. Salute them. So. Salute them. We should salute them. General Gob strides out the door, jaw clenched, eyes resolute with pie hatred. Well, that was weird. I guess I'm the general now. Can I sit behind the desk? Oh, I can't. That's a sad, a sad thing. Okay, there's a tent. You hear the sound of several goblins snoring inside this tent. Go in, guns blazing, or leave them alone. Can leave them, just leave them alone, and then go back to them as need be. 
Yeah. It's, a, it's an unusually sized cannonball. Let's take this cannonball. <laughs> oh dear, what was it called? I guess we'll put one in the cannon. A, a demi culverin cannonball. So, yikes, this mishap definitely got somebody fired. This sign has the goblin word for toilet on it. Oh dear. Uh, Fort Cowardice tent. Uh, based on the papers and anatomical diagrams scattered across its service, you're guessing this design belonged to Fort Cowardice's nurse. Look at the papers. The papers are mostly just boring medical records. Dental... Dental records. Lamentations on antibiotics. Uh, haven't been discovered yet. This kind of thing. Hey, wait. What's this? This looks like it might be important. You got an item. Marching orders. This is a set of army marching orders from before all of the army's marching orders were March back east just as fast as your lily livered little yellow bellied feet can go, you damnable cowards. The diagrams. There's a bunch of disgusting drawings of sliced open bodies. Oh, nice. Cot is soaked yeah, in man. blood. Oof, jeez. Uh, this shelf still has some unlooted medical supplies on it. Render them looted! Uh, okay, we've got some a trauma kit and literal gauge whiskey. Uh, there is a safe labelled controlled substances, but we haven't got safe cracking, so we can't do that. Ah. Let's go to the loo. No, we can't go in there. No way you're going to go in there, apparently. Uh, the goblins. What should we do about those goblins? Should we fight them? Uh, well, we, couldn't, we, we can't use the, the marching orders to march them out of there, no. Oh, well, actually, it's a good idea. Let's find out. Inventory. Yeah, the Demi Culverin Cannonball. This cannonball is made for the Demi Culverin, a cannon with a ball diameter of 10 centimeters. No Demi less, no Demi more. Skull. Demi. Marching orders. Okay. Let's read those. Uh, there is a set of marching orders directing a rifle division to Fort All Dead. Far to the north of Dirtwater. It's a treacherous place up there. A fellow ought to be careful. Hmm. Right. So, um, okay, almost, so... It's, it's told it's a new location. Do we leave right. these goblins alone, or do we actually beat the crap out of them? Uh... Ah, let's fight him. Yeah, so, let's go. go look for a fight. We got the jump on them this time, apparently. Yay! Okay, we can... Muscle up! A tough looking goblin, a moxious goblin. It's one of the bosses that's got the most HP. Do six damage to all opponents. Okay, we'll do a singular attack to the guy in the front first. We're at full 13. Uh, we'll get Susie to construct us some defense. Oh, Jesus, he's gone after Susie. Oh, boy. Um, that's no good. Okay, well, how, how many... He's got six HP left. Ah, oh, damn it. Do 20 damage to target. Silver bullet. Smoking sword, getting on HP. Okay. Let's get the guy with the sword just out of the way. Yeah. And then Susie can hopefully. If she can't heal up. She can take uh, a pop shot at somebody. Let's take a shot at the one with the most health. Did 16 damage. Oh, Susie's in trouble. Right. Heal Susie. <laughs> we just threw a bolt of first aid into the air. <laughs> That's how we heal, apparently. 
Uh. Hey, have you not seen RPGs before? You know, it's like the uh, throw the item up. Okay. Yeah. Hold an item up in the sky right. and then it. I'm gonna the do a do a could do a stomp. Do six damage to all opponents. If I target this guy with the stomp. I'll do so. He's down. The other guy's got six damage. Susie can shoot him and might actually kill him, and does. Thank goodness. Hey. Okay, thirty XP. You've heroically defeated the sleeping goblins who are guarding their beds. You gain thirty XP. <laughs> heading to the tent. Footlocker is empty. Foul-smelling cot. An unlocked. Oops, a stained cot. An unlocked footlocker. I guess that just makes it a footer. Open the footer. Uh, got a full canteen. This is some very old water in a very old canteen. Drinking it would probably give you tetanus, which was discovered very recently. This item is used in camp. Uh, this is used item is in combat. It puts out fires. Hard attack increases your armor by five for the rest of the day. Uh, foot locker is rusted. Locker this foot locker is rusted away to almost nothing. Kick it open. Military grade whiskey and a silver bullet. And the other one we can't undo because we haven't got any uh, anything going on. Okay, what we got here? Food-wise, let's uh, let's okay. uh, consume the hard tack spleen, blackened beans, roach bull, dusty tapes, and cracker, smelling salts. Additional action points. May as well give you additional action points. Uh, for almost spiked coffee. Dirt water bourbon, which is famously actually has invisible chunks of dirt in it. Special HP. Depressed ranch of candy. Increases your melee by 7 for the rest of the day. Uh, I suspect we're actually going back now, but. Yeah. And yeah, there's nothing else here. Can we do something with the cannons? No. Quiet to the church on Tuesday. Guess we missed the party. Yeah, it must be abandoned for some reason. 